Hey guys, this is Anna Kavadudes all the way from Down Under, and today I have the top six free-to-play first-person shooters of 2016. This is a completely new and updated list, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Coming in at the number six position, we've got Zula. Now, Zula is a incredibly popular free-to-play first-person shooter in Turkey. Now, the reason why it's very popular is for two reasons. The first reason, it is based off an incredibly popular TV series in Turkey, and also it has very low system requirements. Now, graphics are not too spectacular. The game, to be perfectly honest, isn't that nice looking. The gameplay, very generic. Maps ripping off games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive. As you can see on the screen, it is a blatant Dust 2 clone. Overall, the game looks extremely generic. However, that doesn't mean it can't be a solid FPS. I think it goes under the category of games like Crossfire, where the game doesn't look very good. The gameplay is very, you know, stock standard generic. However, the it can shine in its respective area. The game has 150 available weapons. That is very, very extensive for a relatively new title. It's got a variety of maps and variety of modes. And overall, it seems like a game that if you need something to play with a, with a friend that has a relatively bad PC, then this game could be for you. Now, at the moment, it is only available in Turkey. However, there is going to be a European beta relatively soon. Coming in at the number 5 spot, we have got Line of Sight. Line of Sight was originally known as Combat Arms Line of Sight when it was going to be published by Nexon Europe. However, Nexon Europe dropped the game and now Black Spot Entertainment, the creators of Line of Sight, are now self-publishing the game. Line of Sight is, I'd say, quite a fun first-person shooter to go and play. I've had extensive playtime and graphics-wise, it's it's up there. It's one of the better looking first person shooters in the free to play, you know, section. However, in terms of gameplay, Line of Sight really has a Call of Duty feel to it. It doesn't feel like a Korean first person shooter, like Sudden Attack. It really stands out from the rest of the pack in emulating Call of Duty, which really no other free to play first person shooter has done and that type of movement even though it is a bit more sluggish and has a little bit less you know snappiness and response to it it feels a bit more realistic and i like how to go and implement it into this game now weapons wise we really don't have too many guns to choose from however of the guns that we do have access to there is a lot of customization you can really go to town and change the muzzle change the magazine change the sight change the stock change the barrel you can change a lot of stuff on these guns and that means there is endless possibilities including different camos now maps and modes You've got your stock stand, you've got your elimination, your team deathmatch, your deathmatch, your search and destroy, your capture the flight, your domination. You've got these stock standard modes and I really it doesn't really go too far from the tree in terms of innovation. The model of distribution for this game is going to be through Steam and it's going to start with a Steam Early Access. And Steam Early Access means that you have to pay a certain fee and then you'll go and get into it and you have access to the game. Now, the game is already released in Brazil and Thailand. However, you have to be, you know, in that respective region in order to go and play the game. And in those respective regions, there is a lot of content already added to the game. New guns, new maps, new modes, all these type of really, really cool stuff. And I think that when it goes through the global version, the Steam version, that's going to be cool because they're going to go and gradually implement all the, all the really, really big updates. And then we'll finally get up to the point where the Brazil version is. That means updates are going to be coming thick and fast and it's going to be a lot of really fresh content. So if you want a game that can go and hold your attention, Line of Sight may be it. Coming in at the number four spot, we have got Iron Sight made by a Korean developer, Cold Whipple Games. Now, Iron Sight looks like an absolutely fantastic free-to-play first-person shooter. When you have a look at the graphics, it's top-notch. When you have a look at the gameplay, it's generic. It has that Call of Duty vibe, but it seems like the game really doesn't want to go and push any boundaries. It simply just wants to be good at what it just wants to be good at, and that is a standard Korean military first-person shooter, but that goes a bit above in terms of gameplay and graphics, but doesn't go and give us superpowers. It doesn't go and give us this amazing, you know, zombies feature. It doesn't go and give us all these crazy, crazy stuff. It just goes and keeps the gameplay nice and simple. It goes and gives you 
probably a few, a few kill streaks, as you can see in the trailer. We've got predator missiles raining down, but have a look at the guns. The guns function like a gun should. You run around properly. The maps look good. Overall, the game isn't going to be, you know, something that will go and say, wow, it's going to be genre defining. No, but Whooper Games, they're not asking for that. They're simply trying to go and produce a game that the Korean audience, and hopefully, hopefully, they said maybe they're going to do a global release. But hopefully, a North American, a European, Australian, and so on, audience can go and just say, okay, if I don't want to go and pay $60 for COD, I can go and get this for free. That is an alternative, and that's a market they're looking into, because many games simply, many publishers simply have just not gone and tapped into that type of market. The closest on this list I would have to go and say would be Line of Sight, but saying that, Line of Sight is going off in a very different direction. This is going to be, it feels like it's going to be very parallel to like a game like Modern Warfare 2, Iron Sight. Iron Sight feels like they're taking a lot of pages out of Call of Duty, and I'm perfectly fine with that because having a free-to-play COD game for people to go and play if they just don't want to go and pay $60, that is a really, really good idea. Coming in at the number 3 spot, we've got Sudden Attack 2, which is published by Nexon Korea. Now, Sudden Attack 2 is the very, very, very hyped sequel to the original Sudden Attack. And overall, Sudden Attack 2, in my opinion, does go and really live up to the expectations that people have gone and put forward. In terms of its graphics, it is basically cutting edge when you look at Korean first-person shooters. In that genre, the graphics really aren't that high. But Sudden Attack 2, it takes it to the next level and the graphics are really, really good. Now, when you compare it to modern AAA shooters that you'd pay 60 bucks for, does it compare? Somewhat. It somewhat compares, but it's definitely not on the same level. But in terms of the free-to-play market, it is really, really nice looking. And overall, you'd want to go and maybe turn down a certain setting where it has, you know, this movie filter that gives it a really bad overwashed feel. But when you go and get it on its raw settings, you crank it up the ultra, the shadows, the depth of field, the color, it looks very vibrant and it really goes and feels like you're actually in the battlefield rather than just a bland, you know, landscape, a bland environment where you just shoot people like a lot of other first person shooters are on the market. Now, gameplay wise, it is very, very reminiscent of Counter-Strike Global Offensive, in my opinion. The reason why is guns have a very, very, very quick time to kill. It is very easy to go and kill people in sudden attack too, because HP bars are low and damage is high. Now, map-wise, we've got Team Deathmatch maps and we've got Search and Destroy maps, which is basically Bomb Defusal. Team Deathmatch maps are very, very chaotic, very close together, and there's classics from Original Sun Tech, like Warehouse, that's back in the game as well. Now, in terms of Diffusal maps, they are more spread open and more tactical, and that's where I could see it possibly becoming an eSport, because there is a lot of tactics you can go and implement into this game. Now, when you have a look at the weapons in the game, there isn't that many. When you have a look at the customization in, in the game, very extensive, very extensive, extensive customization. A lot of characters are going to choose from. And overall, is it as le is it as genre defining as the original Sun Attack? No, but is it a worthy sequel? In my opinion, yes. Coming in at the number two spot, we've got Unreal Tournament 2016. Now, this game is made by Epic Games, and it's currently in an extended alpha phase. And overall, there isn't too much to go and say about this game, because if you like arena shooters, if you like a Unreal Tournament, and you like Quake, you will absolutely love this game. However, if you're not into that type of style of game, if you're not into very very unrealistic scenarios where you can be hop around and people can go and get insta gives and it's more about, you know, trying to go and line up shots with a rocket launcher while a person's flying in midair. If you don't like that type of high chaos, very close quarter, very jumpy type of action that the arena shooter is known for, then you really won't like this game. However, as I said before, for the Quake and the original Unreal fans, this game is an absolute blast. Reasons why. It simply has that DNA injected into the game. It is a more updated, it is a better looking, it is a more refined version of the Quake and Unreal of the past. 
Graphics-wise, this game is an absolute beauty. Is it genre-defining? Is it going in paving ways in terms of realism in first-person shooters? No, because that's not what Unreal and Quake is about. The graphics are meant to be really, really nice, but it's meant to simply be there as something to look at. But it takes a back seat when you look at the gameplay. The gameplay is first and foremost. The first and foremost thing is the gameplay. And the gameplay is tried and true to, you know, the games of the past. You can go and b-hop around. There is an extensive amount of weapons to go and choose from. The maps are detailed and very, very, very reminiscent, again, of the past. It simply is the go and sum it up. A updated version of Unreal and Quake. That's all it is, and if you don't want to go and pay for Quake Live, which originally was on my 2014 list, however, that game has gone to pay to play now. If you guys want a free-to-play alternative, then Unreal Tournament 2016 is a definite, definite choice that I would 100% suggest. There is a really, really big community behind it. The devs are slowly but surely updating it. They've got a couple of other projects as well. They're trying to divvy their, you know, team up against. But overall, the game is looking very, very, very good and in a very solid direction. Coming in at the number one spot, drum roll, we have got Evolve Stage 2. Now, Evolve Stage 2 is the free-to-play version of the 2009 first-person shooter Evolve. The premise of this game is basically, okay, we take Evolve, it was a fantastic FPS, we don't change any of the core elements, we just make it free-to-play. The reason why, the game didn't hold a community, simply people moved on to arguably better first-person shooters, and that left the community, that left the community basically barren, and so the developers decided instead of going and just ditching the game, they're going and revive it in the free-to-play format with microtransactions. Now, the premise of Evolve is quite simple. You've got the Hunters and you've got the Hunted. Basically, the Hunters is a team of four people, and you're divvied up into four different roles. These roles are Assault, Defense, Utility, and Healer. And overall, they really go and spread across every type of thing you would need to go and take out the very big monster. However, the monster itself is extremely powerful, has a very high HP pool, and can really really easily 1v1 any of the hunters by by itself though the whole premise of the game is you've got to go as the hunters to go and work as a team really try to go and lock down the monster by using the ability called the dome and this dome ability what it does it goes and locks the uh, the monster in an area for a short duration of time i believe it's a couple of minutes the monster's idea is to go and get up close and personal, 1v1 with these hunters, and try to go and take them out. And when you individually go and take them out one by one, one by one, then you will be in a much better position to go and win the game. Now, the reason I've put this game at the number one spot is very simple. This game was originally a $60 AAA title. It has graphics that surpasses any any free-to-play first-person shooter besides Planet Side 2, but Planet Side 2 is a game that I've already gone and covered in one of my previous lists from a previous year or two. But graphics-wise, it is still, it's definitely up there. It's top five in terms of free-to-play first-person shooter graphics. In terms of gameplay, it is very unique. You've got this hunters versus monster type of gameplay, and it is it, this has never been seen in a free-to-play first-person shooter before. We've got we've had zombies modes before, and that is kind of okay. But this is the next step forward, and there is fully fledged classes. There is fully fledged characters. There's multiple uh, characters per class. There is a ton of abilities. There is a very very, very big amount of depth to this game. And if you really want to go and learn and get a team together, it can definitely become very competitive as well. Overall, when a game is a AAA title and then it comes to free to play, it is going to stand very, very, very high against everything else simply because budget wise, the budget of this game is ridiculous in comparison to basically every other game on this list. It is still a really, really fun game to go and play. I definitely suggest to go and check all of these games out of my top six list. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this list. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like rating. But other than that, Undercover Dudes, all the way from down under.